भाषण दें ताकि हम उनको याद रखें सदियों तक मोस्ट रिवर्ड डॉक्टर करण सिंह जी मेंबर्स ऑफ इज फैमिली माय गुड फ्रेंड मानवेंद्र जी एंड डिस्टिंग्विस्ट ऑडियंस बिफोर expressing myself i'll react on three situations one sardar patel ji in a far sighted manner as usual made sure dr saab gives up wheelchair he ensured the armament of india to bring about that kind of unity integration of princely princely states and getting rid of wheelchair by and large in the entire country i am extremely fortunate and i take it as divine dispensation that i share with dr saab ordainment from my wife is supreme command another aspect unlike dr saab i was not an ex mp i was an ex mp a x e d my term was not complete but i was hardly seen in the central hall that thing it's a touching moment for me it's an honor that will be ever is in my memory i could not have dreamt of it to be on an occasion when we are celebrating 75 years of dr karan singh in public life the historic regions of sekhawati where i was born and mewad where i was schooled in chitorgarh in rajasthan felt worlds apart from jammu and kashmir especially during those days and my teenage years when faster modes of travel and communication were yet to bridge such vast distances yet even then one name managed to transcend the formidable gap a name i often then heard with great admiration it was the name of a dashing young prince who presided over jammu and kashmir dr karan singh <clears throat> yes later i had the privilege of benefiting from his wise counsel and experience while being a parliamentarian union minister governor west bengal and now vice president more recently i consider myself very fortunate to engage with dr singh on occasions continuing to draw inspiration from his profound wisdom and invaluable guidance the last time i had the privilege of reflecting about dr karan singh was on the occasion of his 90th birthday his journey in public service started the day he was born limiting his contribution to just 75 years would hardly capture the breadth of his legacy born in france he was figuratively baptized by fire witnessing and participating in history in a way few can claim by the age of 16 he stood witness to
to the signing of the instrument of accession at a pivotal moment in the nation's history. He didn't just observe, he strengthened the very foundation of that historic document. At 18, Dr. Singh assumed the role of regent, a momentous occasion. I can only imagine the grandeur of that scene on June 20, 1949, when he arrived in Srinagar from Delhi as the regent, welcomed by Sheikh Abdullah and his cabinet at the airport. In that moment, he represented not just, not just himself, but the strength and sovereignty of India during a critical juncture of our history. The organizers, perhaps, organizers of today's event, had that momentous day in 1949 in mind when they chose to honor Dr. Singh's 75 years in public service. Older than the Republic. The Republic, Republic started in 50. as reflected emotively by Dr. Singh. Around this time, Dr. Singh began a new chapter in his personal life, marrying noble Nepalese princess, Yesho Raji Lakshmi. She brought all three elements in his life. Together, they both exemplified grace and dignity, and daring them to all who had the privilege of knowing them. Many of my Dogra friends speak of Dr. Singh's personal qualities with admiration, praising wisdom and warmth while remembering Yeshwaraji Lakshmiji with deep affection, love, and respect. There is scarcely a positive sphere in nation's life that Dr. Singh has not touched, be it parliamentary democracy, religion, culture, philosophy, diplomacy, literature, wildlife, or the environment. His contributions are vast and enduring. When the history of India's former princes and their role in strengthening the country's unity is written, Dr. Singh would undoubtedly hold a place of great honor. His decision, a remarkable decision, a tough decision to make a dramatic transition from royal comforts, specifically as the constitutional head of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, to electoral politics in 1967 was both bold and visionary. In doing so, Dr. Singh achieved a historic milestone, becoming then the youngest ever member of the Union Cabinet at the age of 36 on March 31, 1967. This not only marked a turning point in his career, but also signaled the arrival of country's youth he then represented as now. Ready to take up the mantle of responsibility and shape the nation's future. Dr. Singh has long been a champion of interfaith harmony, advocating for it at numerous public meetings and conferences, many of which are well documented. Friends, over the years, he has become a prominent figure in the realm of spirituality and philosophy that his name naturally arises whenever great thinkers are mentioned. He speak of Vivekanand and Dr. Singh name comes to mind. Mention Aurobindo and Dr. Singh stands out as one of his most learned disciples. His vast body of work, comprising his course of books, reflects 
the depth of his intellectual pursuits. A true poet philosopher, he has explored subjects as diverse as philosophy, spirituality, and the environment. His deep love for the mother tongue, Dogri, is evident in the numerous books he has authored. Perhaps one of his most, I would say, not so visible achievements is his pivotal role in conserving India's national animal, the tiger. If the tiger remains a symbol of India's wildlife heritage and its survival is ensured through the Project Tiger Initiative, it is largely due to Dr. Singh's unwavering commitment. Distinguished audience, therefore no surprise than that he himself has sometimes been affectionately referred to as the tiger. And why not? He shares with the tiger tenacity and strength, both in thought, action, and anticipation. Dr. Singh's simplicity, organic, natural, pristine, his simplicity, humility, disarming, authentic, and warm demeanor are widely admired. There is instant recognition in a magnetic manner of his demeanor. His presence at a particular place is electrifying. He doesn't have to find a space for himself. He has his space in every soul, every heart. His remarkable achievements have consistently served the greater good, benefiting both society and the nation. His mastery over body and mind is extraordinary, reflecting his deep inner discipline. In his presence, one cannot but feel that a man of such stamina, intellect, and erudition is more than capable of navigating the complexities of political life with ease. Distinguished audience, Dr. Karan Singh is amongst the few who have had the benefit of being insider of politics with outside vision and outside politics with a deep inside focus for over 75 years. As I said earlier, in that sense, he is older than the Republic. <laughs> Distinguished audience, I deeply reflected that on such an occasion which is historic, such an occasion which does not, to my mind, has a parallel, what should I seek? from him that may gel with his personality. I am coming to that part now. I seek to avail on this momentous occasion the opportunity to appeal to Dr. Singh and the few like him. The intelligentsia, the academia, to bear influence on issues that concern our nation. Few of such issues I venture to advert. Dr. Singh has over seven decades witnessed the rise of the nation and contributed to it in many ways. The nation presently is in unprecedented economic upsurge and on incremental development trajectory well set to be a developed nation at 2047, if not earlier. Distinguished audience, convergence of forces within and without inimical to Bharat is a matter of deep concern and alarming. 
so also anti-national narratives. There is need for concerted endeavors to influence national mood so as to neutralize these pernicious forces. Undoubtedly, executive governance is exclusive to executive, as are legislation to legislatures and verdicts to courts. Exercise of executive authority by either the legislature or the judiciary is not in consonance with democracy and constitutional prescriptions. This is established position as the executive for governance is alone accountable to legislature and answerable to courts by way of judicial review. Distinguished audience, executive governance by the judiciary is jurisdictionally and jurisprudentially beyond constitutional sanctification. However, this aspect is engaging active attention of the people, indicating in their perception empty such instances. This significant aspect calls for deep re reflection at your level, sir. Few like you, the intelligentsia and the academia. This influencing category, the most potent weapon of democracy, to inspire and motivate people needs to act as a beacon for catalyzing healthy and enlightening national discourse to ensure deference to constitutional assents. This would wholesomely contribute to blossoming of democracy and nurturing constitutional spirit and assents. In all humility, so I appeal. Friends, I am indeed humbled. This is a moment for me to ever cherish. To be at this place, in this position, on this occasion. I pray Almighty to bestow his extreme indulgence on Dr. Singh so that he continues to be with us and serve the nation and humanity by his sublime qualities, sterling behavior, and a man of erudition. Thank you, Jain.